your body, your body thinks that it's still sunlight. Through entrepreneurship, you cannot build a business without having people around you that not only are part of your team. What's about is they, they, they purchase this sofa and they um, take it with them across the city, across Toronto. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Restless Millennial Podcast, the voice of the motivated youth. I know it's been a while since I last posted, uh, but we're here now. We're here with Ben Simon. He's joining me on the show today, and he is the founder of Ben Simon Guitar Lessons. Yes. So that kind of speaks for itself, but I'll let him just introduce uh, what he does. Yeah, uh, Ben Simon's Guitar Lessons was uh, officially founded in 2016, and I teach uh, guitar lessons to, uh, it's private guitar lessons to adults, youth, seniors, uh, kind of all over the place there. So, so how did your kind of uh, tell me a little bit about your background in music and how you got kind of like did you, did you pick up a guitar when you were like three years old? <laughs> no, and like nor do I suggest age? that. Um, <laughs> I, I actually started on piano. Yeah, uh, piano was uh, I, I maybe it was five or six, um, and then uh, I did about five years of piano, um, and then with the ultimate goal of always wanting to play guitar. Uh, but my dad was the one that was telling me that you, you have to do five years of piano yeah. uh, and then we'll get you an instrument that you definitely want to do. Uh, so I did five years of piano, then I got my guitar and then just kind of hit the ground running from there. But why, why piano to start? Is there a... Um, my dad... That's interesting. Uh, my, my, both my mom and dad were... Um, piano is a really good instrument to kind of start on because it develops the independence yeah. of your left and right hand um, at the same time. Um, it's a really visual way yeah. of being able to learn. There's white and black keys, you know, so mm -hmm. it's a very visual instrument where other instruments don't really have those visual cues as much. Um, that being said, um, if somebody's, my only kind of problem with it was I really wanted to learn guitar. Yeah. So it was yeah. like, okay, do this first for five years, suck it up for five years, then, <laughs> then do, <laughs> then, do uh, then do guitar. So it's not necessarily the route I would always suggest, but yeah. Um, so when you were like first starting to get into playing guitar, like who are your biggest inspirations? Who did you want to be like? Uh, James Hatfield yeah. uh, from Metallica, for sure. He was uh, one of your biggest inspirations? Yeah, yeah, still, like he's the root of my, yeah. my playing, for sure. I, I, <laughs> was introduced to Metallica when I was in like uh, grade seven and I just had never I, at that point I was into like you know classic rock anything that uh, my parents happened to be listening to um, and then I was kind of getting into the punk scene right. like some 41 AFI that kind of stuff yeah uh, and then I was introduced to um, Metallica and then that changed mm -hmm. that changed everything. So when you were first starting to play, like how quickly did you pick it up? Uh, I would I, I picked it up pretty quickly yeah. uh, and mostly because I took five years of piano right. before. And that was me walking into my parents' point. Yeah. You know, is that yeah. you know, you can pick up these instruments really quickly now. Um, but I also try like if you if you start with an instrument like your next instrument will be pretty easy to pick up. Yeah, yeah. I, for sure. And I think it also depends on like what instrument yeah. uh, you go to. Like I don't know if it's as transferable from piano to yeah, drums, that's true. for example. But yeah. um, you know, I still needed. I had the independence of my fingers, mm -hmm. um, and then all of a sudden, I didn't need my right hand as much yeah. for guitar because it's really just your your left hand, your right hand just has to pick. It's kind of like sports, like if you're really good at one sport, you can play like a Yeah, it tends sport, to be right? transferable, yeah. right? But like those who are good at badminton are probably pretty good at, you know, um, tennis, tennis <laughs> right? Where I, I don't know if they would be necessarily good at soccer. Yeah, that's you true. You know, they're both sports, but I don't know if they're necessarily transferable. So I think there are some instruments that definitely relate to each other. But um, I, yeah, I definitely picked it up quickly simply because I had five years yeah. already behind me of musical experience. So already you started notes. Ben Simon's guitar school or yeah. guitar lessons in 2016. Yeah. But were you teaching guitar at all before that? Yeah, I, I yeah. started teaching when I was uh, 13. We were 13. Yeah, I was in like grade nine. And you were teaching like, what kind of, were you teaching people younger than you or people older than <laughs> most, you? Of, most of my students were older than me. Really? Yeah. So you yeah. had like, like how old? Like 30 years old? Yeah, like, yeah, so like full, like fledged So they were getting adults. lessons from a 13 year old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they got what they paid for. It was $8 yeah. per half hour and yeah. like, for me it was just I, at that point I couldn't legally work yeah right you know at so 13. Um, you know it wasn't allowed and I, I really just wanted to I wanted to be able to continue pursuing music because I was really just getting into guitar and uh, finding that I actually had like a knack yeah. for it so 
I was like, I need money to be able to buy more musical stuff and guitars, recording equipment. Uh, so I was like, I'll just start teaching. Yeah. Um, again, it was an idea from my parents. They were like, you know, you should try teaching, see how that goes. So, was it ever intimidating, like telling someone who's a lot older than you, like they're doing it wrong or like to do something this uh, way? Like, I think it's hard because it's so long ago now that yeah. I don't actually remember my, my feelings because I've been doing it for so long now that everything feels very like natural. Blur, yeah. yeah, I think I couldn't see why it wouldn't be intimidating yeah. um, as, a, as a kid, yeah. um, especially kind of my first few students where I was still kind of discovering my teaching style yeah. and how I spoke and um, how I varied my lessons from student to student. So um, yeah, definitely it would be intimidating. So you went to Trent University and you took like an education program. Yeah. So did you kind of put like guitar lessons on the side as you went through high school and university? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Guitar lessons for me were always uh, kind of a side job. Yeah. You know, it was just a really good way to earn money. I was lucky enough to have, like, my clients were, my schedule was full uh, through my high school career, so I never really had to worry about another right. job. Um, so, uh, but then once I, it was always to gain experience so I could go into, right. like, elementary school teaching, which is what my parents both did as well. Um, so teaching is just kind of in the blood. It's just mm -hmm. my mom's parents were both teachers. It's just something that we all do. Uh, so I always had it in mind that I was going to be an elementary school teacher. So teaching guitar was kind of my resume to get into the university saying like, you know, these are my lesson right. plans that I've set up since I was 13, you know. Um, and then university started and I kind of put guitar teaching to the side there so and so, so what changed as you went through university like was there a point when you realized that you didn't want to do teaching anymore and you wanted to kind of pursue your own yeah uh, so my dad was diagnosed with cancer um, and he was 49 mm -hmm. um, so I would have been like 19 so I think this is my third year of university um, and you know he was lucky enough to work a job that he loved. He loved elementary school teaching. That was kind of his his passion. Where I was just kind of like, oh, that's the safe route. You know, you get into it, and then you have a career, and you have a pension, and you know when you retire, life's going to be great. And yeah. so, but like he didn't even make it to his retirement. Yeah. You know, um, so for me, it really kind of woke me up and started making me ask questions of like am i doing this because it's safe or am i doing this because i want to do this yeah for what could be my my lifespan you know um and that's when i started changing my mind around things and then that summer i went home and i thought you know what i'm gonna try teaching guitar and see if there's still a market test it and then i booked up within like two weeks wow um for that summer this was the summer after your third year yeah this would yeah. have been um I had the summer of 2014. Okay. Um, so I booked up instantly, and then I I really forgot how much I loved it. Yeah. And I was a lot better too, um, because I had now better at playing or better at teaching or both. Both. Uh, you know, I had taken all the strategies that I had learned from concurrent education, which I was taking at Trent, um, to get my teaching degree, and then also. Um, I was just a better guitar player as well because I had more years under my belt of my own extracurricular study. Yeah, so I assume it was a four-year program and you completed the degree, right? Like, uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, four years and then that fifth year is uh, when you go off to Queens. Okay. Uh, but I, I never went off to Queens because at that point I, I knew that what I was doing, but I, I did graduate with my degree and um, but my dad <laughs> everything with my dad kind of threw a wrench into yeah, yeah. my whole kind of way of life and way of thinking so um, but that's uh, kind of had to happen mm -hmm. um, and then that kind of works into my next question do you think Ben Simon Guitar School would be here today if you hadn't experienced that tragedy I yeah that's a hard one because yeah. I don't know yeah um, there's part of me that hopes that it would that at some point, I because I know where I was when he did pass away, yeah. and it was okay. Do this because it's safe. Do this, and like looking back on it, that's such a terrible mindset to have, mm -hmm. you know. Where you know it's a good mindset in that you want financial stability, that kind of stuff. But like, if you're just working to get by, yeah, you know what's the point? Or if you're living just to get through your week, right? Yeah, yeah. it's uh, that's there's not really a point. Like life has to be. There has to be something more to yeah. just working a safe job and then 
So did you yeah. did you figure that out right away as you started teaching guitar lessons? Uh, pretty yeah. quickly. Yeah. Pretty quickly. So that's why, like, I I hope that you know. Um, had my dad not passed away, I would have made that discovery on my own and wouldn't have ended up trapped in something that I maybe, like I like teaching, I like being in elementary school, I did all my student teaching, on it. it's not that I didn't enjoy it, I just yeah. like this more, you know? Yeah. I liked being in control a lot more and being able to do exactly what I wanted to do. Um, so part of me hopes that I would have made that discovery on my own, but it certainly would have been delayed. So what advice would you have for people who are in a similar situation, like let's say, you're, you're, you're okay with your job, but you don't love it. You know, like there's, there's something else that you can do, but there's an element of risk to like towards going all in on it. Would you recommend, like what, what steps would you recommend them like, uh, something like that to take in order I, to like get, yeah. get past that like mental like limitation? I think pursue exactly what you want to do, but in the meantime, get a job. Yeah. You know, like it, it's, I got very lucky in that when mm -hmm. I started in, officially in 2016, I had clients right like away. Right away, yeah. Uh, but like I had full intentions to just apply to like the arts music store in Newmarket or, mm -hmm. you know, even Sobeys or something just to have like this undercurrent of income right. that I would work for, whether I was doing night shifts or whatever. Um, and that way I could then use my free time to pursue your passion, my passion and, and yeah. then build something from there. But like too many people exit out of university and they immediately think that they're going to walk into the job that they love. And for some of us, it's true. And that happens. And we get lucky. Um, but I would say the majority of people and the way it probably should happen is you exit university, you find out what you want to do and you, yeah. you know, and, but get a job first, even if it's not the most glamorous thing, just yeah. get yourself working, get yourself paid yeah. so you're not waiting for your next paycheck to be able to do something you know yeah. there's um, too many businesses out there where they're you know it pays well but their paycheck comes once a month depending on their clientele yeah. it's like okay get an undercurrent of, uh, of money first and then as you build up your business you can start stepping away from that other That's, one but yeah. you shouldn't be walking out of university and going oh i'm just going to be unemployed for the next couple of years while i want to do the thing that i love yeah i think that's yeah. the biggest thing is people say they want to do stuff but there's a difference between wanting and actually taking action on it right? yeah and that like yeah. nothing's immediate yeah. yeah too you know like i'm still building up my clients so it's, it's just um that's just kind of the thing you you have to do. But if you if you sit around waiting for the perfect opportunity with the perfect moment and that kind of stuff, it's never gonna happen. Yeah. You know, you do have to build it, but there's no reason why um, you should waste the time in yeah. waiting for that moment. You know, I don't understand the people that just kind of walk out of university and are just going, well, I'm just gonna wait for the perfect opportunity opportunity to like yeah. knock on my door and then I'll accept it. And it's they like, might well, get some offers and turn them down because they don't. Yeah, it's them. like, how about you just find the job that pays you? Yeah, exactly. And then in your free time, pursue the thing that you love. Yeah, because if you get a job, like no one's, who says that you're like locked into it, right? Like you can still be pursuing other things. Exactly. It's so like, earn yeah. some money, be useful. You yeah, know, right? money's important. I'm not going to lie. And, yeah. and sugar code is that money is really important and you have to make a living for yourself. But yeah. um, sometimes you don't get to walk into the thing that you love mm -hmm. right away. So when you first started your like teaching again in 2016, yeah. you said the clients came in really fast. Were some of those clients older clients that you had when you were teaching before or uh, all so, new clients? Yeah, some of them were, uh, which was really strange. I have one student that like has been with me since I think probably my first month of teaching. Yeah. And you know, now we've worked primarily on his songwriting, that kind of stuff. So his lessons are so far advanced now that we're- So you work, you, you teach songwriting as well? Yeah, that's, oh, it's wow. actually one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, okay. Um, it is songwriting, because I, I am a songwriter, that's how I- Have you written your own music? Yeah, I have yeah. Two, two albums and- Oh really? Uh, well, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna throw a link in the video. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's so. all it's all been published, yeah. and I work in a studio and got it all recorded awesome. and stuff. So, like, it, it, we're, what studio? Just around the area? Or? Yeah, it's a acrylic recording. It's in um, um, Kettleby. Oh wow! So nice. yeah, it, that was like the best experience ever. But yeah, yeah I, I love teaching songwriting. So my student that I've had since I was like thirteen is still with me, uh, which is crazy because we've both grown up <laughs> kind of together. Yeah. Because uh, he was like early twenties. When you first started teaching, yeah. you were like 13? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we've both kind of grown. So uh, I have a, an agenda that I give my students, and it's like 50 pages. So for me to fill an entire agenda takes, yeah. like, it, you just don't fill an entire agenda unless right. you're there for 
like a decade or whatever. But it's really cool because if you look back to kind of the first pages of his agenda, you can see where my writing has changed. Yeah. You know, you can like it's my 13 year old self that has written this stuff. <laughs> you know, so it's really weird, kind of like going Looking back like, in time essentially and seeing how my teaching changed. Like, oh, I used to write full sentences, and then right around here, I switched to jot form because it was quicker. Yeah. You know, or this is when I developed this exercise. So, um, that student in particular um, was is and continues to be kind of my guinea pig for new yeah. techniques and that kind of stuff. So. so you said you teach 70 students a week. Yeah. So my question is, how do you, how do you manage that? Like, how can how, how do you manage your time? Uh, I'm learning. To... I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, that's a learning curve. Uh, how long like, is each lesson? I uh, half an hour to an hour, depending on. Um, so I'm just trying to do the math now. If you do that like 70 times a week, like that's that's a substantial amount of your week. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, like it's a uh, you know I I think if I worked nine to five every single day, it, that would still be more. Um, yeah, but like because I'm not teaching 70 hours. That's true. You know, yeah. I mean, some of these students are half hours. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it is a considerable amount. Um, was it hard at first? Because I know you said you had all the clients like pouring in right away. Yeah, well, like I had at first when I like uh, so I graduated in May, yeah. 2016. So like April, uh, I remember t uh, talking to my girlfriend, my fiance now, but my girlfriend at the time, saying, you know, I'm probably going to be working night shifts at Sobeys. Yeah, you know, um, to get because. Primarily teaching hours are four o'clock onwards right. because that's when um, students are out of school. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, you know, I'll work the night shifts that way I can sleep during the day and then I can start teaching at uh, like four o'clock. So I entered May, so I was in April and then I posted that I was teaching and then immediately people started signing up. So I think I had like 25 students on my first day. Oh my God. Like just. My, well, in my first week, yeah. uh, which was great. It was a great start and made me hesitate on applying to Sobeys because I was yeah. like, I already have more students than I had when I was teaching yeah. originally. Um, and then each month it just went up. Um, so how so, did you like? How did you go about getting these all these clients right away? Did you um, just like go through mutual friends and ask people, or like? How yeah, you... like I like I posted on my my social media, um, the, like welcome to Bradford. Oh yeah, page. So yeah, <laughs> every business owner has used that page. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know I, that page is interesting, yeah. but like it, it works. Like, yeah. It works. Uh, like the majority of my students are from there. Yeah. Um, you know, I started networking with people, and uh, a lot of it. Once I started teaching again, a lot of that my own advertising became uh, word of mouth. Right. Which is really nice. I love it when that happens because now my I can focus more on teaching rather than more advertising. And advertising. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So like. A lot of times I don't even post that I'm looking for students. I'll just post a picture of like a student learning. Yeah. And that picture, somebody will be like, hey, I saw this picture. You know, I'm interested in lessons. You know, you know. Your lessons are, are good. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I hope so. <laughs> uh, so that's uh, kind of what I do now. But certainly at the time I was, you know, posting at least once a week on that page and on all the other Bradford pages. And, you know, I... I had a sign. I have a sign out from my house uh, as well. So some people driving by see that as well. So. so you teach people of all ages. Do you, off the top of your head, like what's the difference between your youngest student and your oldest student right now? I'm just curious. Uh, six to seventy-five. You're teaching a seventy-five-year-old. Yeah, wow. that happened today actually. Wow. Yeah. And like, what what made him want to learn guitar at that uh, age? He like, already knows how to play guitar. Oh, he just wanted okay. his technique tightened up uh, and, and cleaned up. And that's so uh, interesting. Yeah, it's like. Seniors is a is a tough one because a lot of it becomes physical ability. Yeah, you know, right. like you like see our skills aren't as good. Yeah, and like you start seeing arthritis becoming more of a problem as well um, at that age. So, uh, like, I would love to teach more like retirees, like fifty to sixty yeah. year olds. Um, but he already knows how to play. Um, he just his technique is a little bit uh, shoddy in some areas. Yeah. So we're just kind of cleaning that stuff up. So. Um, and he doesn't have any problem with uh, dexterity, so yeah. I'm like, it's, it's I don't really care what age you can. If you can, if you can play, 
we're going to be fine. Yeah, it's really yeah. interesting how you can you have to adapt to like yeah. the different needs of different people in different ages. Yeah, like someone who's six and someone who's seventy five, like that's a completely different style of teaching, right? Yeah, and that's one of the things that I love about, yeah. and one of the things that kind of convinced me not to go into elementary school teaching is because like you're stuck with a grade for that year. You know, you're teaching yeah. like grade five right. all year, and grade five kids are wonderful, but like for me, I can be with a six year old and a 13 year old and then a 70 year old yeah. within an hour and a half of each other it's a nice mix yeah it's yeah. great and it keeps me it keeps my business feeling fresh because i'm not teaching the same people the same thing every yeah. day you know a lot of most of these students i see once a week yeah so um what i'm doing with one student i may not have to teach that again with until another, the yeah. next week you know um, there's definitely some overlap for sure because Especially if you're just beginning guitar, right? You all need to hold a pick the same way. You all need to hold a guitar the same way. You know, there's overlap there, but um, I I love the differences in ages because uh, it keeps me sane <laughs> as well. Because I love teaching adults. I love teaching yeah. kids too. But like, there's only so many six year olds I want to see in a day. Yeah. So the fact that I can go from a six year old to like a thirteen year old, imagine. you know, where I where I have like this person who's this kid who's just entered high school yeah. or grade 10, you know, these are like really lovely kids that are, you can talk to them like normal people. Yeah. You don't have to baby them. Yeah. You know, so um, that's kind of one of the biggest positives of my job is that it, the variation is, uh, it's constant, <laughs> you know, it's never the same. Yeah. So like you don't get involved in like too much repetition. Well, no, like you said, there's some overlap, but yeah, it's not there's the definitely same story every single yeah, day. but like uh, somebody can and like yeah. and then with the age difference too comes musical taste as well. So like I could right. have two 13 year olds, but one is into like Taylor Swift and the other one's into <laughs> like Slayer. Yeah, like those are Polar two. Opposites. Yeah, those are two. You know, they still have to hold the pick the same way. They still have to hold the guitar the same way. But you know, one's playing electric, one's playing acoustic. Yeah. So one I'm going to be teaching primarily chord changes, the other one's I'm going to be teaching like speed picking yeah. and endurance and that kind of stuff too. So, um, so even when I get into the same age, sometimes the lessons are completely different just based off of their personality, mm-hmm. which is awesome. So what do you start with when you're teaching someone guitar? Is it like you, you have to learn first how to hold a pick and yeah. then go from there? Yeah, you've never yeah. played guitar. I can tell I like how you just did that. Oh, I stopped that. Like <laughs> yeah. Like uh, no, yeah, it's uh, basically it? <laughs> like uh, how I explain to my my kids. It's your first and your th- uh, your your thumb and your your pointer yeah, finger, and pointer. it's like you're uh, squishing a bug. Oh, you okay. know, uh, and I'll, then you I'll just keep yeah, <laughs> and you just keep your hand open. So uh, that's <laughs> usually what we. Uh, yeah, I was holding it like this. Yeah, yeah. Like, I want to play the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's uh, that's kind of what we start with. Was just yeah finger positioning that kind of stuff uh knowing the parts of the guitar yeah too so like when i refer to them they don't look at me as if i'm insane yeah you know yeah, like, yeah. okay put your finger on the first fret and they're like do you provide like guitars for that for them to play during their lessons or would you say like to get their own yeah I, I tell them, uh, my students to get their own guitars yeah. just because that way they can practice during the week yeah right um so we have um a really great music store in newmarket that um i send all my my students to to pick up their uh, all their stuff that they need um, I do have like three or four really they're in really poor condition but they're just guitars that have been given to me from clients that have grown out of them oh yeah um, that sometimes if a student doesn't know if they want to actually take guitar and they just kind of want a trial month essentially um, I will let them use one of yeah. those guitars and that way they can they don't have to make a you know hundred and or two hundred dollar investment yeah in, in how much is a, is a decent guitar um i mean it varies like with with beginners i wouldn't really suggest anything over 200 yeah um but like i'm getting a guitar that's close to two grand yeah um uh, very soon it should be coming in um but you can have guitars that are four or five mm-hmm. grand easily but like i would say like if you're if you know it's a passion and that's kind of stuff you're looking at like the 600 hundred dollar range yeah. probably um, and then everything else is up to your own kind of like what you're into, yeah, yeah and like what you can afford and that kind of yeah. stuff. But like for beginners, I'm like, yeah, you know, two hundred bucks should be just fine. Like you don't want to. I like my biggest pet peeve is when people go into like Toys R Us. Does that still doesn't even exist? Still, it still I, exists, I think right? So, yeah, sure. uh, so they go like Toys R Us, like Best Buy for like you know they go to these 
places that are not music stores for musical yeah. instruments. I'm like, these are toys. <laughs> I'm like, you wouldn't go to Sobeys for like a dentist appointment. <laughs> Don't go to Toys R Us for a guitar. You yeah. know, it's uh, go to a music store because they will they will be built like musical instruments. Yeah, so exactly. You can get cheap guitars, but I would say um, two hundred dollars for a beginner mm -hmm. is probably fine. That's fair. So before we sign off here, like, yeah. what are your future plans for Ben Simon Guitar Lessons? Take over the world. No, uh, <laughs> it's... Uh, the only guitar teacher in the entire world. Yeah, <laughs> just take over. Uh, no, um, my, my plan is just grow as much as I possibly can. Um, do you see like a future? Do you have your own studio? Like where do you teach out of right I now? I teach out of my house okay. uh, right now. I, I don't really like teaching in stores. Um, mm -hmm. Just because they're usually four white walls, That's and true. they put up like posters, and it feels very much like a clinic. Yeah, you know, um, where when people are coming to my house, it's a really, really warm environment, and I make it that way on purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's one of the first things that students usually say when they first walk in, they're like, oh, it's a, this is a really nice place, yeah. you know, uh, which is it's nothing fancy. It's not a big room, but it, it's just cozy, um, which is where I want my students to feel yeah. comfortable. So, uh, but for me, I think it's just take on as many students as I possibly can while still being able to live my life and yeah. enjoying kind of the play part of my life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, take on as many as I can, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So I've got one last question before yeah. we end up the, the podcast. And I asked this to all my guests as the last question. What do you want to be known for when you leave this planet? I know it's a tough question, but you know, it doesn't have to be one for? particular thing. Um, like, like, yeah, I, I, I guess like your legacy, like I'm a little young to be thinking about it. No, yeah, it's, uh, I, uh -huh. uh, I think, uh, what do I want to be known for? I, I think I want to be known as somebody who worked hard and like, I'm trying to say this without sounding cliche, yeah, but like yeah, no. I truly did what I love to do. Um, and I think I am a, a product of what happens when you work hard, you practice, you kind of grit your teeth and go through the, mm -hmm. the motions to get to where you want to be. But I, I like to be known as a person that was there for his community. Um, because the whole reason I started music lessons here is because we don't really have private teachers. Yeah. It's not really a thing. And it sucks. Yeah. Uh, because we have a population of like, what, 50,000? Yeah, close to it. Yeah. You know, I need 100 students to be stable for the rest of my life. Yeah. You know, and that's like 0.001% of the population. Yeah. So we need music teachers. And I think mm -hmm. the fact that we don't really have any kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, so I'm all open for yeah. more music teachers around here. and. Um, and I'm sure there's other communities too that have a lack of music. Yeah, it well. just we're, we live in a time where like I feel like if more people played music, we'd be in a better place. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, they wouldn't be so angry with each other. Yeah. It's like just play your instrument, you'll feel better when you're done. Uh, so I think maybe my if I have a legacy, it would just be someone who saw a need in this community and, and acted on it. Yeah, yeah. So all right, that's that's a great way to end this uh, cool. podcast. Thanks so much for being on, Ben. It was Thank a you so much. All the best to uh, Ben Simon Guitar School Guitar mm -hmm. Lessons. I keep messing that up. That's but all right. It means to say. I mean, as long as we're talking <laughs> about guitar, we're all good. As long as we're talking about guitars and not trumpets or clarinets or whatever. No. But anyways. Uh, thanks so much for being on the show, and for guys, me. you can check out Ben. Um, where can they get in contact with you if they want to? Uh, for um, well, my email is guitarman eight eight three two at eight eight three two at gmail dot com. But uh, Facebook, it's Ben Simon's Guitar Lessons. I just type it in. My own musical endeavors is just Ben Simon. Um, you'll see it, um, and that's that's basically perfect. It. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for listening, guys, and remember, keep hustling.